happy April. Today I thought I would come to you with a quick March wrap-up. Quick, because I did not read very much in March. But then I also wanted to do an April TBR because I'm generally very bad at following through on TBRs, but I do sort of feel like I would like to be thinking a little bit harder about like what's next or what I'm really feeling. I feel like 2021, me reading, things have been a little bit all over the place so far. So just, just getting a little bit more intentional about that reading list, I think is gonna help me out a lot. So I'll just start with my um, March wrap up. So in March, I read two books and both of them were audiobooks. The first book that I read in March was Cat Among the Pigeons by Agatha Christie. Um, this is a sort of later Poirot mystery book. I was sort of like, oh, I should read all of Agatha Christie in order, but then I was like, you know what? It's fine. I don't need to read. I don't need to be such a completist. I don't need to read everything that an author puts out. I'm already sort of doing this for the Discworld series. Like, I don't need to totally have my life dominated by genre fiction and like go through all the bad books. Well, I don't know that Agatha wrote bad books, but I, I think I think they're mostly good, but you know, some of them are better than others. And I don't need to commit myself to reading like a hundred books. I could just read the ones that I want to read. Anyways, so I read Cat Among the Pigeons, which is a later Poirot mystery novel. Basically, it's set at like a girls boarding school and their sports mistress is murdered. And then another teacher is murdered after that. Uh, and it's sort of trying to figure out like what is happening there. There's like actually quite a bit of lead up to the actual murders. They happen in the latter half of the book. Poirot doesn't turn up until like the last quarter or may maybe the last third of the book and a lot a lot of the beginning is setting up the characters um and where everybody's coming from and how they're related and also just spending a lot of time in this this girls school environment uh, i think honestly it seems like agatha christie just really wanted to write a uh campus novel in terms of vibe and in terms of like like atmosphere uh i think i think she did a really good job it has that I don't want to say dark academia vibe, but it is that sort of like rich girls boarding school vibe, I guess, that she just like hits really well. Um, and it's just like a great setting to spend time in, I guess. That being said, I think that the the mystery, the payoff wasn't that good for me. Um, it was It was sort of like Normally with Agatha Christie, you spend a lot of time being like, oh, maybe it's this person and like, maybe it's that person and like thinking through and being like, oh, like it really seems like it's this person. So that must be the red herring and stuff like that. There's like a little bit of that, but it wasn't as tight as like some of the other Agatha Christie's that I've read before. Um, so I think overall I gave that a three star. And then after that, I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which is the second romance in the, the Brown sisters romance series. Um, I really did like uh, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, although um, the male protagonist in that book wasn't my favorite. I liked Take a Hint, Dan Danny Brown even more because the male protagonist was awesome. I was like, oh, you're so great. I mean, we could have a conversation about if he's awesome to the point where it's like, this is absolutely unrealistic. There is that, but I just liked it a lot. Anyways, sorry, plot summary. Um, basically, Take a Hint Danny Brown is about an academic Danny who is very involved in her work and she uh, doesn't really think that she has like the romance gene. She's like not interested in relationships, not interested in like like the, the courting process or whatever. Uh, she does like, you know, getting her needs met, I guess. She has a, a good friends with benefits thing going on. But it, early on in the book, she gets stuck in an elevator and gets rescued by uh, the security guard in her building. And they're already sort of friends. That rescue sort of goes viral and they decide to start fake dating uh, to help out the security guard Zaf's um, nonprofit organization. Uh, so of course, you know, fake dating, um, friends, friends to lovers tropes in this. Um, I really do like a friends to lover story. If it's done well, I find it much more fun than a hate to love because I feel like it's much more believable in a lot of ways. So yeah, I, I just really liked it. I did relate to Danny quite a bit in terms of like, I don't know, just being very fo focused on your work and stuff like that. Anyways, I thought it was a really good romance novel. Um, 
I do, you know, even though I poo-poo romance in every other genre, I do like reading well-done romance. I think it's something about how, like, in romance, if it's done well, the main thing isn't the romance. The main thing is two people figuring themselves out. Whereas when you have romance in other books, like when you have romance in a fantasy book, the fantasy book is theoretically about like the larger happenings in this fantasy world, but then it's really about this romance. And like, like I like romance to be a subplot and maybe counterintuitively, I feel like in a lot of well-written romance novels, the romance is a subplot in a way because it's like, it's not necessarily the romance that carries the story in Take a Hint, Danny Brown. It's Zaf figuring out things about himself, Danny figuring out things about herself, them figuring out how to like be in a relationship together. I don't know. Structurally, it works for me. Um, so anyways, I gave uh, Take a Hint, Danny Brown four stars. Yeah. So those were the two books that I read in March. And I will now talk about what I'm planning on reading in April. Planning being the operative word here because I am not good at follow through. But there are a lot of things I would like to read, so I'm just going to talk about them. First off, I thought I would talk about the two books that I'm currently reading that I hope to finish in April. Uh, so these are um, Authority by Jeff Vandermeer, which I'm reading with Mo from the Ruby's Digest. We're both struggling a little bit with this one. I'm on page like 130 and I started reading it in the beginning of March. So it is slow going. I think basically, at least for me, I'm not going to I'm not going to speak for Mo, but for me, uh, I sort of expected this to be another really tightly written, weird little sci-fi novel. Um, and it is quite a bit longer than Annihilation, which is the first book in this series. And it just took a long time to heat up, I guess. Like the first hundred pages were for me quite boring and probably could have been just like almost entirely removed. So that's a little bit disappointing, but then I do feel like it is starting to get back into the sort of tonal space the first book was. Like it's starting to, it's starting to move quicker and like I'm getting back into it. So I do think that I will be finishing this in April. And then the other book that I've been reading is Exhalation by Ted Chang. This is a, a collection of short stories by the guy who wrote Arrival or the, the story that led to the movie Arrival. Um, and I'm almost done with it. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of takeout. So all of my bookmarks right now are chop chopstick trash, basically. Oops. But I'm almost done with this. I'm like 50 pages from the end. And I really love this book. I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk about this more later because again, this is like books that I'm reading for April. So they will be in my April wrap up, hopefully. And um, I'm also doing a sci-fi reading vlog right now. So hence the sci-fi. But yes, I, I really, really have been enjoying this book. Like it is a short story collection. So the different stories can be a little bit more hit and miss, but the good ones, the good ones are really, really good. So I'll talk more about that later. Other than these sci-fis, I sort of have two goals. The first one is that I need to get back into reading some essays because essays are like some of my favorite nonfiction to read. Um, but I don't think I've started an essay collection since Jackson 1964, which I read last, last winter. I, I guess Disfigured also counts maybe as an essay collection. It's a little bit more linear than like a normal essay collection, but it reads sort of in the same way. You know, even if in, in overall quantity, essay collections aren't don't make up like the majority of my reading normally, but I almost always have at least one going on in the background. And right now I don't have any. So I did just want to go through some of the collections that I have uh, that I would like to get into in the next month. I'm not, you know, saying that I'm going to finish these in April, but just like getting back into the habit of having one going is sort of my goal for this month in general. I have so many essay collections just like on my shelves that I haven't read. Uh, so this, this is like not hard to find a bunch of books that uh, I could be reading, but I picked out a couple that I think would be uh, really interesting to start. The first one is, which one is the first one? The first one is uh, How to Write an Autobiographical Novel by Alexander Chi. I haven't actually read any of Alexander Chi's fiction, but I really do sometimes like starting out with a novelist nonfiction, even though that's counterintuitive. Um, I, I just sort of feel like getting to know novelists or, or like writers 
through their nonfiction writing sort of helps me contextualize their fiction in like what's important to them and what the authorial intent is behind some of the fiction writing, which I think sort of just adds another layer of depth to it. I know that there are people who really like going into books like completely blind and that's like you know, a totally valid way of reading things. It's a collection of essays that I think pulls from his experience and also uh, I presume talks a lot about uh, writing as a craft and stuff like that. And I always find that sort of collection really interesting. So this is one that I would really like to get to soon. Another essay collection I've been sitting on is Loitering by Charles D'Ambrosio. This is one that I actually really don't know a lot about, but if you do get very into uh, nonfiction and essay writings, you start to hear a lot about D'Ambrosio in general. Like he's like a cult favorite of people who are really into essay as a form. So of course I was like, I also need to be in, in this conversation and on this train. I very rarely buy an essay collection without first reading some of the author's writing online. Um, but I'm going into this one totally sight unseen, I guess. So I'm a little bit worried, but I feel like it's gonna be amazing. I feel like at least it's gonna be good, hopefully. Let's just like not ruin this with my expectations. Okay, and then the last essay collection, which I've been putting off, but I really would like to get to is In Search of Our Mother's Gardens by Alice Walker. Um, again, I haven't actually read The Color Purple, uh, so that is something that I should read at some point. Uh, but this is just one of her essay collections and I picked this up used at one of my favorite bookstores, the Montague Book Mill. It's a used bookstore in Western Massachusetts and I went there on one of my uh, reading, reading vlogs. Uh, so I'll link that somewhere. But yeah, so I, I think that this is going to be a really good collection of essays. Uh, it's about feminism and political issues and racism in the US and stuff like that. But the reason that I've been putting off reading this is I'm like feeling very precious about this object because there's this great note in the front. Normally I just treat my books like crap. But number one is like a pristine used edition. Like the binding isn't cracked at all. It's just like a very beautiful book in general. But then also there's this note in the front, which goes to Nancy, Christmas 1985. When I read Alice Walker's acknowledgments, her sense that life offers wonderful things made me want to give you her book. May you continue to gain an inner strength to draw upon, to reach a peace when the confusions and pain confront you. Love you, Joanne. I'm crying. No, anyways. Joanne is a lovely woman, I'm sure, as is Nancy. I mean, this was in a used bookstore for $4, so I, I don't know how I ended up there. But I, I love, like, used bookstores because I love finding stuff like this. I don't, I don't want to read this and, like, screw it up with my bad annotations and, you know, break the spine and get it gross and stuff like that. But a book is for reading, so I will, I will start this at some point. And maybe that point is this month. Okay, cool. The other thing that I really want to do in April is I really want to participate in the Linguathon, uh, which is run by Noelle and Annie, and I'll link their uh, announcement videos down below. Uh, but basically, this is a readathon that is dedicated to interesting books, like linguistically, I guess. So books in translation, um, books about language, things like that. Yeah, I, I just have realized that I'm actually not very good at uh, prioritizing books in translation. And also I wanted to like try to participate in something on book two, because I'm not, I'm not a very good joiner, unfortunately. But I thought that this, this month, this month I'm gonna try to do Linguathon. I'm just sort of cherry picking some prompts that I think that I can accomplish and are interesting to me, but let me just go over uh, what I'm sort of thinking of reading for those. The first prompt I'm hoping to do is an Asian novel in translation, and there are a number of books that are on my general TBR that will um, work for this prompt uh, and I really want to prioritize. So one would be Earthling by Sayaka Murata um, and she wrote Convenience Store Woman which was one of my favorite books of last year uh, and I think that Earthling I really don't know anything about it going in but I expect it to be a very short and weird book which again is sort of like turning out to be like my fiction codex or something. It turns out that I just really like short and weird books. So I think Earthling is going to be really great and I'm going to really enjoy that. 
So that's one book that I could read for that prompt. Another would be Strange Weather in Tokyo, um, which I've also heard very good things about. And then a third book that I could read for this, giving myself lots of options here. A third book that I could read for this is Until the Coffee Gets Cold, uh, which is a sort of, I think, collection of short vignettes that focuses around like time travel. And basically the premise of this is that there's this coffee shop in Japan where you can go to and you can you know, get get a coffee, and while you're doing that, you can travel back in time. But you have to you have to be back in the present day by the time the coffee gets cold. I think that's it. And I've uh, seen a number of people review this book um, with uh, mixed reviews overall. Uh, but I do think that it sounds like it's sort of like my speed right now, and maybe would be a really good audiobook for me because I I do need to like make sure I have some audiobooks mixed into this. TBR because some months such as March apparently I basically only read audiobooks um, so I think that would be a good option for this as well. Another prompt I would like to do is uh, read a novel in verse and I thought that for this one I would just do a reread. One of my favorite books is The Golden Gate by Vikram Seth. Vikram Seth being the guy who wrote A Suitable Boy aka like a 1400 page novel that everybody knows. This was his uh, PhD thesis, basically, I think, and it's quite short. So basically, this this is just a uh, novel in verse uh, written about the Bay Area in sort of like the, I guess, 80s? I think it's set in the 80s. Um, and I just really like this book. A, the language is beautiful, like he does a really good job of, of using the form well. And B, I think it's just like, like there, there are like characters that you care about and like plot that happens and stuff like that. But it's also just like one of the best representations I've seen of the Bay Area, like pre 2000, like pre current tech boom, I guess. Um, and it, it just like feels very nostalgic to me, even though I, I wasn't alive when this this book is set, but it, it just feels very familiar to me in terms of setting and atmosphere, I guess. So I would really like to reread this one. The third prompt that I would like to do if I have time is the read a sci-fi or fantasy book in translation. And for that one, I have Shishin Lu's The Three Body Problem. This could also be my uh, read an Asian novel in translation as well. So I could double dip if I want to. But basically, I don't know anything about this, except I've been trying to read more sci-fi recently. And this one has really good reviews. Obama likes it. The Hugo Committee likes it. I think I think it could be a really good book and sort of would be a good continuation of my current like trying out sci-fi scheme, I guess. Anyways, that's basically what I'm planning on reading uh, in April and my March wrap up and all that stuff. I am hoping, you know, I'm not really committing to reading all of these books, but I am hoping to get started on some of them at least, the essay collections, and then also read read some good works in translation this month for Linguathon. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of these books. I'd love to hear them. Um, yeah, that's it. I guess I will talk to you guys next week. Bye!